reading for today is going to be from Mark chapter 13, verses 14 to 27. It's going to be on the screen as well. When you see the abomination that causes desolation standing where it does not belong, let the reader understand. Then let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains. Let no one on the housetop go down or enter the house to take anything out. Let no one in the field go back to get their cloak. How dreadful it will be in those days for pregnant women and nursing mothers. Pray that this will not take place in the winter, because those will be days of distress unequal from the beginning, when God created the world until now, and never to be equaled again. If the Lord had not cut short those days, no one would survive. But for the sake of the elect whom he has chosen, he has shortened them. At that time, if anyone says to you, look, here is the Messiah, or look, there he is, do not believe it. For false messiahs and false prophets will appear and perform signs and wonders to deceive, and, and if possible, even the elect. So be on your guard. I have told you everything in advance. But in those days following that distress, the sun will be darkened, and the moon will not give its light. The stars will fall from the sky, and the heavenly bodies will be shaken. At that time, people will see the Son of Man coming in clouds with great power and glory. And he will send his angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of the heavens. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we want to ask you this morning that you would... Bless our hearts, Lord. You would open up our hearts to your word. You would open up our ears and minds. And you would reveal to us things that haven't been revealed before. In Jesus' name. Amen. Um, so this is a hard section of the Bible, obviously. It's been discussed and argued about many before me. And uh, to be honest, no one really knows exactly what it's all about. And if anyone tells you that, they might be lying to you. But any take on this is as good as the others. And um, the fact is that what we see in there, you see it in other parts of the Bible as well. And you see chaos, you see complete chaos, terror, horror, end of times. And I wonder what you think when you think about all this. It's a significant passage that is found in three out of the four Gospels. It's in Mark, in Matthew, and Luke. And it's something to come, you know, nice to come back from your holidays if you've been away over the past week. But I tend to joke with people about this. I'm that sort of person that kind of likes to talk about, you know, uh, things like the end of times. Don't get me wrong, I don't know much, you know, neither do I pretend to, especially when it comes to the end of all things. But the little that I know is enough to know that I'm in safe hands. And I've got no problem whatsoever with all of that. And I say this knowing that it will be horrible. It will be terrible. A lot of bad things are going to happen, but we need to keep our minds towards the end. And the end of the story is that Christ is already victorious. And the good news, our hope that we cling to on each day, is that if we belong to him, that we are victorious as well. If we're thinking of the end of times and signs and all that, we've got a lot of scripture to go to, um, including Revelation, Acts, Joel, Daniel, and others. And I find it all not so very easy to understand, but you know what? I don't even need to understand it all. What's important is to understand the main things that have been revealed to me. And people received revelation through different ways by the Holy Spirit. And last week, we also celebrated the Pentecost event and some of you know this already, but there's a strong connection between Pentecost and the end of days. Do you know what it is? The connection is this, that at Pentecost, the end of days have started. So now ever since that day, we are living the final days. How do you feel about that? Do you feel anything? I mean, the end could come right now as I deliver the sermon or afterwards when we have lunch or 10 years from now or a thousand years from now, Jesus said no one would know, but that we should constantly be ready. On the day of Pentecost, something amazing happened. Most of you know that before the Holy Spirit of God would only come on some special people, leaders, and so on. 
But now everyone that believes in Jesus Christ as the risen Lord and Savior receives the Holy Spirit and also different giftings from the Spirit. And so God has been communicated to, to people through various ways, to Daniel, through visions, sometimes visions in the night, others through prophecies and so on. And dreams are the primary way in which God chose to communicate to me ever since I was a kid. And it's one of the things that you don't choose when, when it's really happening, and I'm humbled that God uses me in that way. But when a dream or prophecy comes, and we've encountered gifted people um, that prophesied about something, and then, you know, it was sent from God, it came to fulfillment and all that. But I also want to raise an awareness and to tell you something that Jesus said. That some people would use so-called gifts in order to manipulate and make people do what they want by putting before their words, thus says the Lord. And therefore we have false prophets and false messiahs all over the place, and it's quite hard to tell the difference sometimes. And in my personal life, I've discovered that there are three potential sources for dreams, visions, and prophecies. One of them, it can be from God. The other one, it could be from yourself. And the third one, it could be from the devil. And I believe in the manifestation of the Holy Spirit. I spoke about that, the, the way that the Bible teaches us. I've said it before. And as a mature Christian, I ask God for his help. And I can distinguish which one of the three it is. But there were times in my life where I believed everything that I dreamt was from God. Or other times I believed that God doesn't love me anymore because he doesn't send me dreams anymore. So I choose to open up in this way because I know that there are plenty of people that have struggled with this. They have been hurt by churches in this way where they might have gone to church and said God healed them. And then the church told them that God doesn't do that anymore today. And I know there's also been people trying to profit from others because of the end of days situation. I know of people that have been manipulated into doing things because they thought the person was speaking in the name of God. So there's been a lot of hurt around some of these issues. I want to tell you today, in case you don't hear from me ever again, but you always need to filter what you hear through the filter of the written word of God, the Bible. Because if there's one thing that I'm sure of in this life is that God doesn't contradict himself and that the word of God is never changing. It's the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. And in there, you will find more than you will ever find in any human being. So for me, it's inconceivable that a Christian person can, you know, come and tell you that they don't spend time dwelling in the Word of God or that they don't pray with God. And I remember this preacher saying once, if, if you as a believer now don't pray to God and worship Him here on earth, what do you think you'll be doing for eternity once you die? If praying and spending time with God is boring to you, what do you think you're going to be doing in heaven? And so God reveals stuff to us through prayer and studying the Bible. And it's important that we read our Bibles daily and we pray because you cannot even go to the corner shop without the help of Jesus. So you need your Bible the way that you need air. You need prayer the way that you need breathing. And in this book, front to back, there's a vast amount of gold that you can dig into every day. And every day you do it, you will not become poorer, but in fact, you'll become richer in knowledge and wisdom from God. And so the reason we're here today is because ever since, you know, we've been together, we've went a lot through Mark. We had a series of Mark just now. And if you know me, you would also know that I don't just skip over and select various Bibles, you know, verses and so on. Um, and, and I was speaking to my supervisor over the past week and, and the fuel placement and all that, and I told him about the passage, and they said it's one of those passages when they come across to it, they'd rather go on stage and say, well, today I'm going to speak about John 3.16 to you, because it's, it's of that intensity, um, that, but, but here we are. And we're not skipping the good part, which is the end of times, because this is very helpful to all of us. You don't know who you're going to encounter this week, that you might be pointing them towards Christ, because the world as we know it is ending. Um, this is the reality. The world had a beginning created by God, and the end is going to be brought by God as well. And so the reason I mentioned Pentecost and some of the gifts of the Spirit is because it's connected to the end of times. And if you know in Acts 2, quoting Joel 2, that it says that in the last days, God said that I will pour my Spirit on all people. 
your sons and daughters will prophesy, your young men will see visions, your old men will dream dreams. Please don't dream dreams during my sermons, but when you think of the end of all things and all that, what are you thinking of? Are you thinking of zombie apocalypse? I don't know. That's quite popular. Are you thinking of experiments going wrong? Are you thinking of nuclear explosions? You see, one of the things I don't want to happen to you is going away today and constantly be in fear because the end might come this instant. Oh, what would I do? No, I simply want to raise an awareness and to tell you that you need to be on guard, that you need to put your life straight in order, and you need to get right with Christ whether you're saved or not. That's what Jesus said. Be on guard. Be alert. And before the pandemic, God revealed something to me through the Spirit. He revealed to me, and and it was one of those occasions um, where I just got the main point because I didn't understand anything else that was happening. But I saw the horsemen of the apocalypse in Revelation come in one by one. And in order, with the right colors, because I checked the Bible afterwards, if you ask me now, or if you ask me beforehand, I don't think I know them all in order or by colors or all that. But to me, at the end also, it came like a round-shaped city, tower, whatever it was. And what I received from God was that something big was coming. In my mind then, it was the end of all things. But that those that put their trust, this was the important bit, that those that put their trust in the Lord will be protected, they will be kept safe. And so shortly after the pandemic happened, and we all remember the pandemic, the fear, the terror, the lack of toilet paper, but some of us thought, <laughs> but, but some of us really thought we are not going to make it. And I know that some people didn't make it. But you see, in all things, when you don't have anything to hold on to, no hope for the future, or you've got worries or anxiety, you need to hold on to Jesus, and He will help you. And even if death, physical death comes, we have that assurance through Jesus' promise that we will be with him in heaven. And so the gospel says that at the end of days, those will be days of distress unequaled from the beginning when God created the world until now and never to be equaled again. And so this is a serious warning for all of us here today, whether we're saved or not, that there is one winner in this story. When the ultimate judge returns, Jesus Christ, he himself is the winner. And he will judge everyone based on one thing. And it's the responsibility of those that know him to go and tell others that don't know him. Because everyone will be judged, not based on how they've lived your life or or, or not, or although we will be held accountable for how we spend our time here on earth, but we will be judged based on if we knew and followed him or not. So how far are we from all that? I honestly don't know, but having a look, you know, let's have a look at what's going on in the world. Again, I'm not saying it's here, it's happening, run for your lives. I'm just saying be on guard because things look crazy out there. But first of all, we have the devil dancing and having fun, running loose all over the place, messing up with people's minds and even singing at festivals and awards and places like that through people that impersonate him and they dressed up like him and all that. Even in some churches I saw recently, you know, during their Easter service, there's some mnemonic stuff there that I'm not really very happy with, but people were happy in those church settings with. Worldwide pandemic, you can take that box. We talked about it. We've had others throughout time, maybe, but this is the one in my generation, so I can speak about this one. What else? Thirdly, the number of the beast. I mean, this, this is an interesting one. It's literally just around the corner if you think about it Um, you've got places like romania i don't know if you heard of this but they voted for a law where the government you know can take kids away under certain conditions there's other laws that they're doing together now to try to change that and amend it and the whole situation is a big mess they're trying to force people to do things Um, during the pandemic my mom was in romania Um, in case you didn't know she said that one of the things were that she wasn't allowed into a supermarket unless, you know, they were vaccinated against COVID. And this is where all the trouble starts. You need to understand that you cannot just make people do things. This is not right with God. And take away from them the will, you know, that God gave them. 
And people were forced and are forced to do things against their will. You had, in, in the UK as well, we had it. Some of you know that, you know, heard, heard of nurses and care home workers, and they've been fired for not wanting to get the COVID vaccine and so on, and how they've been trying to, to sort that mess up and all that. And you can think whatever you want about all this, but the reason why it upsets me and why I'll never be okay with anything like this is the fact that no one has the right to force you into doing anything. But in a similar way, perhaps, we will, the Bible says, that's, that's what it says, that we will be asked to bear the mark of the beast in order to buy or to sell. So we will be forced into choosing between leaving or, or starving, or everything else that you require payments for, gas, electricity, petrol, all that, everything. You already might have heard of microchips and implants under your skin and plans to store all your personal data and bank account details so you could pay with an implant under your skin and so on. We're living in a world where technology enables us to do plenty of stuff, good and bad. Again, this is not meant to scare everyone, but it's meant to be a wake-up call for all of us to be on guard as we don't know when the time or the hour when it's all going to end. What else? War started between Russia and Ukraine. You know the details, I won't go into the details and how this could you know, possibly affect the whole world and all that. But it's happening here in Europe. There's other countries in, in war for, for many years now and wars and rumors of wars. You've got the nature gone wild, the result of global warming, Italy and its floods, Turkey and earthquakes and so on. And so one thing that we're not allowed to think or do is being ignorant to the signs around us. The time is near. Repent of your sins. Start seeking God with all your heart. Go and tell others. Because when Christ is going to come back, it will be too late. Repent and renounce all that is sinful is not just for the unsaved, it's for us, the churchgoers as well. We need to leave all the wrong behavior and follow God wholeheartedly. So I wonder how the end of times is going to affect you. You see, I love this illustration of the tree in Psalm 1. Most of you know it. Psalm 1 says, Blessed is the one who does not walk in step with the wicked or stand in the way that sinners take or sit in the company of mockers, but whose delight is in the law of the Lord and who meditates on His law day and night. Read the Bible, meditate, pray on it. Why? Because that person is like a tree planted by streams of water, which yields its fruit in season and whose leaf does not wither. Whatever they do prospers. Not so the wicked. They're like chaff that the wind blows away. Therefore, the wicked will not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the assembly of the righteous. For the Lord watches over the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked leads to destruction. You see, the chaff, most of you know about the chaff, it gets blown away by the wind. People of God, God is doing some sifting in the world. And those that just go with the wind and don't follow God are just like the chaff, which is blown away. But those that follow the Lord will be like the tree planted deeply in Him. And no matter what comes against this, even when it's broken and bashed and falls to the ground, its roots will remain planted in the Lord. Be aware that there are people in churches all over the world that behave like the chaff. And at the slightest sight of adversity, are being blown away where the wind takes them, along with the sinful nature of the world around them. But the one who will remain faithful until the end will be saved. That's what Jesus said. I want you to know that the chaff-like people that don't focus on Christ will go whatever the wind takes them. Because they want to be part of both camps. I've spoken about this some while ago. You cannot consider yourself a Christian to go on a Sunday, make sure that at the end you will go to heaven and the rest of the week you're like the world. Like the world, I mean worldly, sinful, accepting, and so on of anything that says or, or, or goes against the holiness of God. No. The people that follow God wholeheartedly will honor Him. They will strive to be a holy people as the Lord is holy and not to be entertained 
or even of even the thought of having one foot in the kingdom and one foot into the world. You might think of me as being exclusivist, I'm just being real with you. That there's no such thing in the kingdom of God. You cannot say at a point I want to follow Christ and then go and act like the world. Not tell the world in a loving manner that they are sinning against the holiness of God. And that God loves them so much that He wants a better way for them. That He wants them to be saved as well and change their behavior. The Bible is clear that a saved person, a person that becomes a Christian, is a changed person. And so no one that has encountered Christ truly has ever remained unchanged. And it's because of that transformation, that encounter, that they will want to tell others about Christ. So what's stopping us from changing into a holier person that God wants us to be? It could be our own ambition. It could be our own ego. It could be our own self-sufficiency and the fact that we think that we are okay just the way we are and we don't need changing. We are not okay just the way we are. But we have someone that has sacrificed his life in order so that we could become enough. And those that don't accept him, believe him, and follow his teaching will not get to see heaven. And that is very sad. And the other illustration that I really like a lot is the one that Jesus used about the house built on the sand compared to the house built on the rock. I'll tell you this, after looking at some events around the world, the end of times and all that, if your life is built on the sand, or if you fall away from Christ with every adversity that comes against you, or even if you're in church and you're with God, but then the moment you stepped outside the church, you're with the world, accepting, participating, even ignoring sinful ways of the world, you will go down, and you will go as the wind blows. It doesn't even have to be a cataclysm. It could be any sort of trial. But if you build your house on the solid rock, you will know who you belong to, and you will know that you are in safe hands. And if you don't know Christ today, I've got some good news for you. You can still start building your life on Christ by accepting that He died for your sins on the cross, by accepting Him as Lord and Savior, and by following Him. The end of times doesn't look good for anyone. Unfortunately, especially for those that don't know Christ or choose to ignore Him. But for us that do know Him, we've got that hope that we are on His side. You see, no one knows when the end is going to come, but instead of getting comfortable and thinking, sure, it's not going to come in my time, what if it does? What then? Wouldn't it be better to be on guard? One of the best advices that I can give you that comes straight from Jesus is be on guard. Set your life straight with Christ so that you would know where you'll end up when the end comes. And so the main point that Jesus is making is that, yes, this is all going to happen. And you can get as lost as you want in the whole, you know, the, the elect and predestination debate, if you like. And I'm stepping out of it. I'm not going to get into that today. But you'll miss out the point. I keep telling you for a while now, ever since we know each other, if you focus on one thing that's not important, you will miss out the whole point. It's not about anything that people like to debate on. You can choose how you want to spend the end of times. If it's dividing over any of these topics that you could divide about and getting lost in all those debates, but you will miss the whole point. Because the greatest emphasis that Jesus is making is that we are getting ready, that we will get on guard. And that in the midst of all the chaos and craziness that happens in the world, that we are on guard so that it wouldn't catch us unprepared. How are we on guard? How are we watchful? By doing what Jesus was doing in the world, by following his example. Love mercy, do justice, walk humbly with the Lord, that kind of stuff. By loving your neighbor as yourself, 
by walking towards holiness and not staying in the same state of mind that you were before you knew Christ or before you were saved? I'll leave you with this question today. How do you choose to spend the end of times? Time. Amen. Hey, thanks for watching with Church Baptist Church YouTube. If you're new to our channel, why not subscribe? That way you can know when we post new content. Make sure you leave us a comment. Let us know how we can pray for you, what spoke to you today, and where you're writing from. And also share these messages with one of your friends if you find them encouraging and inspiring in any way. Hey, listen, if you're able to, why not join us in one of our services at our physical location? All our details are on the website. I'll see you there. God bless you.